Some 13.7 billion years ago, our universe was born following a very teeny quantum fluctuation of the vacuum, typically 10 power to the minus 43 seconds, leading to this ticking called the space-time web. According to quantum field theory, the space-time tissue born from the vacuum is the source for all matter and light, owing to its fluctuating field of virtual particles disappearing immediately after their creation, avoiding breaching Heisenberg's uncertainty relationships. Remains of this very distant past and crouched within the deep obscurity of these fabulous aeons are quasars, most luminous entities of our universe, being able to break through their powerful jets of matter, the eternal icy darkness. Two symmetrical gas jets betray the existence of a supermassive, completely dark star lurking at the very center of the quasar, and eating up, without any hope of comeback, any matter or any light getting near this obscure horizon. Indeed, matter on the threshold of this no written point named the black hole horizon screams its distress by emitting a fabulous amount of X-rays and UV photons before being fatally gulped down by the voracious monster. Surfing upon the colossal magnetic field of the dark star in order to escape from the deadly attractions of the consuming glutton, two symmetric gas jets gush out from each side of the accretion disk with supreme luminous speed. Here is Chandra, a special observatory with its eyes sensitive to X-rays, allowing to track down Quasar in every nook and cranny of the universe. APM 082795255 is a 12 billion years old quasar, even kiloparsec in diameter, corresponding to one third the diameter of the Milky Way, shown here, edge on, and full face now. This tremendously old quasar has a bolometric luminosity equal to 7 millions of billions of suns and a total brightness 65,000 times that of all the stars in the Milky Way. At the very center of the quasar lies a supermassive black hole having a mass equal to 20 billion times the mass of the Sun. The total mass of hydrogen gas whirling around the black hole forming an accretion disk corresponds to 100 billion times the mass of the Sun. APM 082795255 is also remarkable by the fact that its image is split down into two parts upon observation owing to the presence of a galaxy cluster between the quasar and Earth, bending down through a gravitational lensing effect any light emitted by the quasar. B 
be possible to find water in such environments so unfriendly to life? In order to detect water presence somewhere, the only thing to do is listening in the right frequency range the electromagnetic signal emitted by water molecules spinning around their center of mass. Here is the most abundant kind of water in the universe called Otto and being made of two hydrogen atoms with their one half spins pointing in the same direction and bonded to an oxygen atom whose nucleus holds exactly eight neutrons. This parallel lining of both spins in auto water leads to a total spin equal to one. This quantum special feature condemns auto water to twirl restlessly around its center of mass even at a temperature close to the absolute zero. This never-ending perpetual motion had its origin into a zero-point energy, demonstrating the unceasing quantum fluctuation of the vacuum. Energy levels of auto water are characterized by the fact that the sum of the two indexes adjoined to each allowed angular momentum value j is always an odd integer. The higher the temperature, the higher the angular momentum j, and the faster the spinning of auto water around its center of mass. Any transition between two energy levels of auto water corresponds to a characteristic frequency disclosing existence of auto water somewhere in the universe. A less abundant kind of water named para is obtained when the two one-half spins of hydrogen atoms bond with an oxygen atom having eight neutrons with an head-to-tail configuration. This head-to-tail arrangement of both spins leads to a total spin momentum of zero. Thus, in contrast with auto water, Para water is able to freeze its rotational motion around its center of mass as soon as the outside temperature becomes less than 53 Kelvin or minus 220 Celsius. Para water having no zero point energy is able to move without rotating in the icy intergalactic coldness having a temperature of minus 270 Celsius or 3 Kelvin. In para water, the sum of the two indexes adjoined to each allowed value of the angular momentum j is always an even integer. Similarly to hot water, the higher the angular momentum j, the higher the temperature and the faster the rotation motion of para water, provided of course that temperature is at least minus 220 Celsius. As the electromagnetic frequencies disclosing the occurrence of para water in the universe are not the same as those of auto water, it is always possible to know what kind of water molecules we are hearing. Referring to the whole electromagnetic spectrum, signals emitted by the rotating water molecules are found within the millimetric radio wave range, having an extra high frequency between 30 and 300 GHz. Fortunately, these signals come to us after a natural amplification process named the Mazer effect. This allows us to detect water even when it is very far away from Earth.
Mather effect is produced after an inversion of population between two energy levels belonging to auto or para water. Such an inversion is obtained as soon as enough water molecules have swallowed the numerous interstellar photons wandering around water molecules. After excitations, molecules may release their excess energy by emitting a photon having the same frequency as that of the photon responsible for the inversion process. This process is called spontaneous emission and do not lead to the Mather effect. Mather effect is produced when molecules return to their initial energy level by interacting with another photon of the interstellar medium having the right frequency. Following the stimulated relaxation process, two photons of the same frequency are released instead of one, as in the spontaneous emission case. This diverging process may then lead to a shower of photons having all the same frequency. Lasers follow the same principle as masers but involve nanometric instead of millimetric photons during production of coherent light. Our hunt for water at the edges of the universe leads us to the Caltech Submillimeter Observatory perched at the top of the Monet Key mountain in Hawaii at an altitude of more than 4,000 meters. On this bleak height, a network of radio antenna is found allowing to pick up any electromagnetic signal emitted by a whole range of molecules wandering restlessly in the whole universe. The quite tough atmospheric conditions on this bleak area are particularly well suited to the listening of intergalactic space within the microwave range. Gathering the data of four campaigns between March 2008 and February 2009, the CSO network was oriented toward the APM 08275-5255 quasar in order to measure the amount of water spinning around this hideous object dreadfully old and bright. Obviously, the first detected molecule was carbon monoxide, a ubiquitous cooling gas in the universe for galactic monsters of any kind. Then, suddenly, on the expected frequency range, water begins to speak. Two hundred and one gigahertz para water shivering at minus one hundred seventy two Celsius. Two hundred and four gigahertz auto water freezing at minus twenty three Celsius. Two hundred and twenty seven gigahertz first awakening of para water at minus two hundred and twenty Celsius. 235 gigahertz auto water freeze at minus 23 Celsius. 237 gigahertz auto water in the tropical area at 32 Celsius. 
246 GHz Prairie Water Roasted at 182 Celsius. 250 GHz Prairie Water in the Blizzard at minus 77 Celsius. Last 287 GHz auto water in an oven at 370 Celsius. Thanks to this data, it has been possible to estimate that the overall mass of water surrounding the APM 08279-5255 monster was about 25,000 times the mass of the Sun. Or was also 36 million times the mass of Earth's hydrosphere. This colossal water mass submitted to temperature ranging from minus 220 Celsius up to 370 Celsius is obviously not liquid. Moreover, as this water mass spreads over 200 parsec, the average distance between two water molecules is about 55 meters. Anyway, this quasar APM 08279-5255 located in the Lynx constellation tells us that even when the universe was only 1.6 billion years old, water was already there to help the delivery and sustain of such quasar from the space-time matrix. Finally, if there is a tremendously large amount of water around this quasar, there is still more hydrogen gas, as one may count for each water molecule more than 7 million of hydrogen molecules, recalling that hydrogen in Greek means water genitor. <laughs>